Hello all, in today's video we are going to learn about quality of service and the different techniques to improve quality of service. Quality of service is for the packet flow, the packet flow or we just call it as flow. So this packet flow have to achieve quality of service. So on what flow characteristics do you define quality of service? The flow characteristics are reliability that is you seek high reliability, low delay, low jitter and enough bandwidth for data transmission. Now what is reliability and how is it concerned with quality of service? See if you lack reliability you will lose packets. When you are losing packets the system is not reliable and the quality of service goes down. So if you want a high quality of service you have to increase the reliability and uh, the delay should be minimum because many uh, there are many applications which would like more reliability and uh, they are okay with delay. So according to the applications, different applications we have to see to it that we provide less delay. Then coming on to jitter, what is jitter? Jitter is defined as the variation in the packet arrival time. For example, there are four packets which are starting at the source at time 1, 2, 3 and 4 and they are reaching at the destination at the time 21, 22, 29 and 30 for example. So you see uh, the difference between the first packet arrival time is 21 minus 1, 20. Second packet arrival time 22 minus 2, 20. And third packet arrival time 21 minus 3 that is 26. So this variation in the packet arrival time creates jitter. So we have to see to it that the variation in the packet arrival time is uniform. It's not different. Then comes bandwidth. Different application require uh, different bandwidth, uh, have different bandwidth requirements. So we have to see to it that the enough bandwidth is available. So to attain this quality of service, we have few techniques for attaining the quality of service or improving the quality of service. The techniques are scheduling, traffic shaping, resource reservation and admission control. Now what is scheduling? As we learnt about process scheduling in operating system, likewise we here we have a flow. Okay, what is a flow? Flow of packets. So now we have to see to it that these flow of packets have to be processed by the router to reach the destination. So now this processing if it is fast, if they are being scheduled properly and if the processing is fast, they reach in time. So it is related to the delay. So now to if you want to reduce the delay, if you want to minimize the delay and maximize the reliability, you have to see to it that these flow of packets are scheduled properly. So let us see what are the different scheduling algorithms we are using. The different scheduling algorithms are FIFO queuing, priority queuing and weighted fair queuing. Let us learn one by one. So what is scheduling? As I told you, scheduling is packets arriving uh, at the switch or router, they require processing. So we require a good uh, scheduling algorithm for uh, treating these packets. Okay. So now see what is uh, FIFO queue. We have a arrival of packets. Okay. If uh, the buffer, if the buffer is full, we will drop the packets. If not, we will store them in a queue because this is FIFO. A queue is a data structure which follows first in first out of packets. So here whichever packet comes first will be processed first. Okay, processor here means a router which is processing the packets and then it will be delivered further. So what is the problem with first in first out scheduling here? If there is a most important packet coming, okay, but it has arrived late, it has to wait till its turns comes because it is first in first out technique. So what we do is we go with the second technique called as priority queue te technique. In this technique what we do is every packet is being assigned a priority class. Okay, So every class priority class will have its own queue and higher class higher priority packets are being processed first. 
let us see the diagram and understand that we make use of a classifier here when we have the arrival of packets or the arrival of the flow we classify this flow into high priority packets and low priority packets and we have different queues for high class packets and low class packets the same thing is followed if the buffer is full we will drop we will discard the packets or otherwise we will store them in a queue it's still queuing only we are doing priority queuing only we are maintaining a queue but here what happens is when all the higher priority queue packets are being processed then this switch is turned towards the lower priority queue and then the lower priority queue packets are being processed but the problem with this approach is if the high priority packets keep coming in the low priority packets will have to wait forever that is they have to experience starvation so to avoid this problem we go with the third technique which is weighted fair queuing we go with a technique called as weighted fair queuing this scheduling technique also makes use of a classifier to classify the flow of packets into into class different priority classes based on weights so we are going to assign weights where we will um, have a queue for high priority packets 3 moderate priority packets 2 and low priority packets in a queue where the weight is assigned as 1 so what basically happens here is first three packets from the high priority queue then the switch will turn to the next queue where two packets from the moderate priority uh, queue then the switch will turn towards the low priority queue where one packet is being processed from the low priority queue class like this again we will go back to the first queue with three packets then two then one that means here we are following weighted fair queuing where i am doing priority scheduling it only but in a round robin fashion so here every gets every packet every priority packet every priority class packet gets a fair chance of getting processed three from here two from here one from here so there is no uh, question of starvation as such so this is the best efficient optimized technique for scheduling so coming on to the next thing the next uh, technique for improving the quality of service the next technique is traffic shaping so now what is traffic generally traffic generally is termed as the amount of data or the amount of packets coming on to the network is termed as a traffic so now how is the traffic is is it low or it is very high based on that what we do is if very high traffic and you are still sending packets then you will lose packets and when you are losing packets you are reducing the reliability so you have to see to it that you will shape the traffic in such a way that you don't lose packets more so let us see what are the different traffic shaping techniques so what is traffic shaping it's a mechanism where we control the amount of data or packets in the network so we have two algorithms here uh there are two traffic shaping algorithms we have leaky bucket algorithm and we have a token bucket algorithm so what is the leaky bucket algorithm here in leaky bucket algorithm what we do is the input is taken as bursty data bursty data means more amount of data is being taken as input okay being buffered but the rate at which the output is given is fixed so you have a bursty traffic but you are sh shaping them into fixed size so let us see why we call it as a leaky bucket algorithm because we are comparing it with a bucket with a hole you see i have opened the tap here water is flowing how is the water flow when it comes out of a tap it, it's a bursty flow okay and we have a bucket with a hole so what it at whatever rate does the water flows into the bucket we have a hole how will be the date, uh, water leaking outside drop by drop it doesn't come out bursty it comes drop by drop meaning though you have bursty input the output is always fixed so likewise 
we have the traffic shaping algorithm named as leaky bucket algorithm where you will have bursty data traffic. The leaky bucket algorithm has bursty traffic being shaped into fixed rate traffic. But there is a possibility always that if uh, the bucket becomes full then definitely uh, the water will leak and that will be, uh, that will be discarded. So it's the same case is if the bucket is full and you are sending more packets those packets will be discarded. So let us see what is happening here. You are getting bursty data of around 12 megabits per second for these 2 seconds meaning you got an input of 2 into 12 Mbps of data plus and from this time to this time the host was idle it was not sending any packets okay then for 3 seconds you can see for 3 seconds there was data transfer at the rate of 2 Mbps so how much data bursty data was sent 24 plus 6 which is equals to 30 Mbps okay 30 Mbps of data was entered how was the flow bursty flow though it was idle in between but you can see that how was the output given the output was given 3 megabits per second for how many seconds for 10 seconds meaning 3 into 10 which is equals to 30 mbps so the same bursty input data of 30 megabits per second was given at a fixed rate of 3 mbp mbps that is 3 megabits per second for a duration of 10 seconds so this is what is traffic shaping you have bursty data coming in but the output will be always uh, will be at a fixed rate okay now what is the problem with leaky bucket algorithm that we are going for a token bucket algorithm the problem with leaky bucket algorithm is here whenever the host is idle okay that time it is generally wasting the bandwidth isn't it it is wasting the bandwidth where it is having time but uh, it is not sending the data so what we have to do is we have to credit the user sorry we have to credit the host for its idle time so in token bucket algorithm so you see leaky bucket does not take into account the idle host okay so what we do is uh, we take we credit the uh, host for its idle time by how do we do that is see for the time the host was idle for every second for example or for every tick we add a token okay so for 10 seconds if it was idle 10 tokens will be added into the bucket okay so now for example we have uh, with respect to time we are adding tokens so basically with respect to time we are adding tokens say one uh, token per second we are adding so if you have to send uh, five uh, if one packet is 512 bits the size of one packet to send is 512 okay and you are being uh, you can send one packet per token when you can send one per packet per token so at once if you have accumulated 10 tokens how many pack uh, how much data you can send at once you can send 512 into 10 that is you can at once send 5120 bytes of data okay so at once you are sending so much amount of data provided you have that many number of tokens available with you so once you are using one token once you are sending one packet one token will be removed so the number of tokens you have that many packets you can set send at once this is the idea of token bucket so what is happening here you see we are not sending the data 512 512 512 we are not sending it uh, at a fixed rate we are sending at sending the output at a maximum average rate so you see here a very uh, important and a beautiful point to summarize that the token bucket allows token bucket allows bursty traffic at a regulated maximum rate this is possible because during the idle time the host is being credited with tokens how many number of tokens it has that many packets can be sent at once 
okay so there you were wasting bandwidth and less amount of data was transmitted but in uh, token bucket you are sending the data at a regulated maximum rate when compared to a leaky bucket algorithm so these are the two algorithms for uh, improving uh, for traffic shaping and hence improving the quality of service then the other two uh, techniques for uh, quality of service are resource reservation so what we basically do is here uh, before a flow has to go through a particular network, we will reserve the resources required for the flow. What kind of resources will be required? You will require buffer space for storage. You will require bandwidth for data transmission and you will require CPU time for processing. So you will require all these things. These are the resources that a flow requires. Now, if you reserve them in advance, you, if you reserve them beforehand, you will improve the quality of service of the particular flow of packets. Then the last uh, way is admission control. Now, see, you do not have the capacity to accommodate, accommodate so many packets, but you are still trying to take packets. What will happen? Those packets will be discarded. So what I do is, and when you are discarding or losing packets, you are reducing the reliability. When the reliability is going down, your quality of service is also going down. So what are we supposed to do? We are supposed to provide a um, restriction on admission of such flow of packets for which the resources are not available. That is called as admission control. Routers and switches put restrictions on the admission of the packets from the host when the resources are not available. That is called as admission control. Using all these mechanisms, we try to improve the quality of service. So quality of service is defined basically as the services that a flow would like to attain and the techniques to improve uh, the quality of service are scheduling, Okay, in which the best scheduling is weighted fair queuing, then traffic shaping where we use the token bucket algorithm which is more optimized and efficient than leaky bucket algorithm, then we do resource reservation and admission control for improving the quality of service. Thank you.